So this scene from The Missing actually got quite a lot of complaints uh, when it was initially released. People found it quite shocking and decided they were going to ring in and complain to the BBC. But, you know, the first season of The Missing, they smashed someone's head in with a hammer. So we had to one-up that somehow and we went for a drill. If you're wondering why we're watching in monochrome, it's because I want to concentrate on the camera work, the composition and the performances. I'm going to do a few of these uh, kind of breakdown videos, commentaries from scenes that I've directed over the years, so keep an eye out for those. I'm also going to do an announcement video soon about a mentorship program that I'm going to be running through my YouTube, so hit subscribe to stay up to date with that. So the opening shot here, we're using the car's movement and then Florian, the actor who's playing Jorn, I'm gonna use his movement to take us around to the house. Um, I quite like doing that. You don't always have to use the camera to move. You can actually use the blocking and the movement within the frame to reveal. There's some light in the sky and that's actually a really good thing to do uh, is to shoot your night scene, especially if you're doing them in one as when there's a little bit of light still in the sky, it just adds a bit of texture, adds a bit of depth. Um, still feels like night, but you just get that extra uh, light in the sky. Doorway scenes are always a bit of a pain. The actor's just kind of like up against the wall, so it's good to make sure there's some practical lights around the doorway to help you out there. This low angle shot with the feet in the foreground as the camera kind of creeps forwards, trying to create tension with this. I like Derek's decision here, playing Adam, to just creep the door open and keep it. It's quite defensive. It, that character decision, I think, you know, you can see he's being secretive. And a small detail, but I'm quite happy this isn't just a flat door, that it has a bit of glass in it. That's something that I'd look for when location scouting, just so you're not shooting against, you know, a flat bit of wood. And here, we don't really need to go to this wide. We've established this space already, but I think this low angle is kind of helping just to drive the tension. You can see that we're mixing handheld work here with the more static dolly shots. And I don't think it has to be, you know, scenes exclusively shot one way. You can mix it up for dramatic effect. Typically, I don't like cutaways. I don't really like cutting to close-ups. If a character checks the time, do you really need to see his watch? But in this scene, obviously, we do need to see the cutaways of the printouts here because it's about subjectivity, you know, what's Adam being played by Derek here seeing and how he's sort of denying that information, so it is important. I think it's a really cool idea from Derek here to pick up the glasses. Just an extra detail that his character's put in about lying and he needs to actually put his glasses on to have a closer look because he doesn't recognise this person. And that handheld work that I mentioned earlier, you know, we're really compressing the action, putting the two actors almost on top of each other, building that tension. Now for this reveal, we come wider and we hold the shots for slightly longer. Just that simple change in rhythm can really affect the tension of the scene. Before we hear the voice off screen and crash straight into that big close up on the head turn. Lower angle, wider here, handheld, creating that feeling of unease. And this is where the handheld work really comes into its own because we can jump into the action it enables you to run the scene as one and be able to move with the actors indica there stealing the show now obviously i talk about running the scene as one but we have a young actress in the scene here and you have to be really considerate to them and you know explain to them what the scene's about but there's no need for her to see the violence here so anything that is shot with her was shot without any of this violence that we see. And even her reaction, her running off here, that's just us telling her to, you know, run back upstairs to your bedroom. Yeah, it's great to be in tight and have that movement, but also sometimes just to come wider and to see the action, teeing up what's about to happen so we don't actually have to see it happen. And this shot here, I love it. It's actually not uh, one of mine. It's the idea um, from the DOP, Lawrence DeGator, um, just to be on his back there, I think it's great when you don't see the violence when it's played out of shot and just to see that blood splatter and yeah the blood's out of focus and we never actually saw the gore but I think that makes it all the more impactful. The blood's actually visual effects, that's from the David Fincher school of directing. You don't need to reset, clean up each time, you can just roll the scene and then have more control in post over where you want the blood to go. Final shots in episodes are really important and take a little bit of thinking about. And I love what our director of photography has done here. Just goes to show you don't always need a big jib or a dolly, actually. The right movement in a with a handheld camera can be really impactful, pushing in here to that great performance from the young actress. Thanks for watching. Let me know if there's uh, anything else you want to know about the scene. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. 
do subscribe because I will be posting more of these and also there's the announcement on the mentorship program to come. Also directed another series for Jack and Harry Williams, The Writers of the Missing, which you can check out on Netflix, that's called One of Us. Thanks for watching.